Today, we are going to have a look at this MotoPower 12 volt lead acid battery charger, or as it's labeled here, an automatic battery charger and maintainer. I decided to do a review of this charger after receiving a request from a viewer. These units are best sellers on Amazon, and this was a fairly inexpensive item costing only $20. I did purchase this item using my own funds. If you find this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I would also welcome any questions and comments. They help me know where to focus my efforts, this video being an example. Let's get into the box and see what we've got. Items are packed into the box. There's a set of clips here, and they attach, or they're connected here with an SAE style connector. We've got the charging unit itself. And as we can see here, if we look closely, it's, the input can be from 100 to 240 volts, so that's okay. And the output is 12 volts DC and 800 milliamps. So this charger is an 800 milliamp charger. There's some information on the back. One of the things that I really like seeing here is that this unit has an ETL certification. And so that raises my confidence in terms of the long-term lifespan of this unit and the safety of using this unit and just leaving it connected into the mains current over a long period of time. So that's really nice to see. One end here plugs into a typical electrical outlet and the other end comes to an SAE connector that we can use to connect to one of the items that's in the box. The other item in a, the box is a, uh, well, there's an SA connector in here. There's a cover. So there's a connector there, and that goes to a set of ring terminals. And so the ring terminals are generally, if we want to keep this hooked up to our battery for a long time, we might screw them down to the battery. And there's a, a fuse here that's designed for 7.5 amps. And since this thing only puts out 800 milliamps, the fuse there is more than sufficient. And the wiring, although it seems fairly thin, is more than satisfactory because, once again, this unit is not putting out a lot of current. And the last thing is a short little instruction sheet. English on one side and English on the other side. So a two-page instruction sheet all, all in English that gives us some tips on how to connect it. So it's nice to see that there are some good instructions here. A couple of things that I want to point out, and it's good to see these in the instructions. There's an indicator LED, and the LED has four different states it can be in. Pulsing red, solid red, pulsing green, and solid green. Pulsing red means that the unit is connected, but it means that there's some sort of a fault in the charge process. So it doesn't mean anything about being in the initial phases of the process. The solid red means that the charger is working to charge the battery. The pulsing green means that we're close to a full charge. So that's when we've hit, as it says here, a 95% charge. And that it's just going to pulse until we reach a full charge. So that'll be the final stages of the charging. And then the solid green means the charging is completed and it means that we can leave the charger connected in a uh, what's called a float voltage or maintenance state. And we should see a 13.6 volt uh, voltage on the unit. Now, a couple of other things to note that we're gonna investigate through the process here the fully charged voltage that we're expecting to see on the unit here is 14.2 volts and the maintenance voltage or the float voltage is 13.6 volts and in both cases they've said plus or minus 2.2 uh, volts DC. 
12 volt lead acid batteries and their chemistry are a very widely used technology. There has been a great deal of experience built up over 100 years of use. These batteries are common in cars, uninterruptible power supplies and motor scooters, just to name a few examples. The charge and discharge characteristics of these batteries has been extensively studied. The ideal parameters to keep them at their peak operating capacity has been well established for decades. As I mentioned earlier, this device has a maximum charge current of 800 milliamp hours, and so that's shown here on the labeling. As a result, it is safe to charge most lead acid batteries with a capacity of about 2.6 amp hours or higher. The low charge current means that it will take a fairly long time, likely two to three days, to charge a typical 50 amp hour car battery. Smaller batteries, like the seven amp hour battery here that I'm gonna use for the test, should charge in a few hours. Now the battery I'm using has a capacity of seven amp hours. I discharged it until it reached 10.5 volts a day before starting this charging test. To help visualize the charge process, I will be using two multimeters. One multimeter, this one, is going to be tracking the voltage, and the second one, this one, is going to be used to track the current. We're zoomed in, and let's just look at the starting situation. So the charging unit is off, so nothing is lit up here. In terms of voltage, which is on this meter, we're currently at five volts per division, and so this yellow line is at about 11-ish uh, volts, and if we look down here, we can see that it's being measured as an average of 11.7 volts. So that's what we expect. The multimeter here is showing minus one amp. That's because right now, instead of putting current into the battery, which is what we're gonna be doing in a minute, current is coming out of the battery. The battery is slowly kind of draining through the charging unit. And so we're seeing minus one amp, and that'll change as soon as we turn it on. Now let's turn that on. So now this is red to show that it's operating. The voltage here has gone up a little bit, but that's now the voltage that we're using to inject current into the battery. And the current here is showing, I think it was 810 milliamps to begin with. So pretty close to what we uh, see as the rated capacity of this charge unit. And so this is now running in its charge mode. And so there's no initial uh, pulsing or anything else that happens in the charge cycle. So this starts out and we're charging. And you can see the voltage, if you can see it, is very slowly starting to rise in order to keep the current flowing. And so that's a typical 12 volt charge cycle. We wanna to try to keep the current as high as possible until we reach the maximum charge voltage. At this point, the charging process is progressing. There's not much that's very interesting happening. And so we're just gonna check in every 10, 15, 20 minutes and just see where we are in the charge process. We're at roughly the 15 minute mark. And at this stage in the cycle, we can see the voltage here. It's sort of wavers a little bit between 12.1 and 12.2 volts most of the time, but that's up from the initial starting voltage we had at about 11.9. That's fairly typical at the beginning of the charge cycle. And then we have the current here at about 787, 788 milliamps, and that's been pretty steady over the initial period. And it's a little tough to predict exactly what the overall charge cycle is gonna look like at this early stage of the charge process. So we'll just have to watch and see how the charge parameters evolve over time. We're now about 40 minutes into the charge cycle and we can see that the voltage has come up here to about 12.3 volts, 12.2, you can see it oscillates a little bit, but mostly, most of the time it's showing at 12.3 volts and the current has dropped a few milliamps. It's now down to 780, 81 milliamps. Now at about one hour and 50 minutes, the voltage has come up here 
to 12 and a half volts and the current is still fairly consistent at this point at 773 milliamps. Now at about two and a quarter hours into the charge cycle, instead of relying on the graphical mode to give me some sort of a reading on the voltage, I have switched over to just reading the voltage directly so we can see the voltage is currently 12.9 volts and the current is about 770 milliamps. At the three hour mark, the voltage is now climbed up to almost 13.1 volts and we've got about 760 milliamps of current. We're about four and a half hours into the process and the voltage is now 13.46 volts, almost 13.5 volts, and the current is hovering around 750 milliamps. The way this unit appears to operate is that it comes up to about 13.57 volts, and that's where the full powered charge cycle comes to an end. So let's watch closely. So it comes up to that point, and so now you can see that the voltage has dropped off. We're at more of a, a float voltage, and the current is now oscillating a little bit. I'm going to see if it's possible to capture the uh, changes that we're seeing here with the current on the oscilloscope side of this voltmeter. I've tried to adjust the range of the oscilloscope to try and capture any voltage fluctuation. It doesn't look like there's much fluctuation in the voltage. It seems that the voltage is fairly stable. Uh, whatever jitter is there, I, I attribute mainly to noise. But we can see on the current side that the current is oscillating. We're very close to the end of the charge cycle now. And I've swapped out the other meter with one that allows me to keep track of the changes in current. So this is not an oscilloscope style meter. This is just keeping track of the history. And watch closely now. So we see the system determined that it had reached what it considers 95% charge. The voltage dropped off a little bit. So the voltage dropped off about a tenth of a volt. And now with this meter, which is able to kind of track the readings over time, and I have no ability to control the sampling frequency here. This is just whatever is built into the meter. But you can now see that the charge current is oscillating uh, between about zero. So the minimum here says it's 0 0.02. That's probably a little bit of noise. So it's going down to about zero, and it's going up to about 770 milliamps. And so that's the, the pulsing mode that is indicated by the flashing green LED over here. And I expect that this pulse mode will probably continue for quite some time. The documentation says that this is now 95% charged and it's going to continue until the battery reaches full charge, at which point it'll enter the float voltage. The good news is that 13.5 volts is a perfectly fine float voltage. What'll be interesting is to see how long this uh, pulse charging mode lasts. Does it last for half an hour? Does it last for two, three, four, five hours? That'll, that'll be the question. But fortunately, we can see the pulsing occurring here on the display. It's about two hours since the charge unit moved into the absorption pulse mode. The voltage has risen now to about 14 volts, 05, and we can see that the current continues to pulse between 0 and 770 milliamps. In this time-lapse segment, we can see the end of the absorption phase and the switch to the charged phase. The absorption phase operated for a couple of hours until the charge voltage reached about 14.24 volts. At that point, the voltage dropped into the float range at 13.58 volts. The current continues to pulse and will do so indefinitely. However, 
At this lower voltage, it would be difficult for the charger to overcome the battery voltage. This charger exhibits a different charging approach than I have seen before, making extensive use of current pulsing. The diagram shows a stylized representation of the three charging phases used by this charger. The first phase is a constant current phase consistent with many other chargers. The second and third phases are different from many other chargers. In the second phase, this charger uses pulsing current along with increasing voltage, whereas many other chargers use a constant voltage with declining current. The third float phase employs a similar voltage when compared with other chargers. However, current pulsing, albeit in a different pattern, continues. The current pulsing is intended to reduce sulfation of the lead plates. The benefit of pulsing is a topic of debate, but no one has claimed that it is harmful to the battery. At worst, it increases the duration of the full charge cycle. In summary, this Moto Power charger is a nice, compact unit that can charge almost any 12 volt lead acid battery given enough time. It's super easy to use, requiring no configuration and just a single LED to indicate charge status. I particularly appreciate the ETL certification on the back. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and until next time.